Hello. So far, we learned about the four markets that make up our model economy and how households plan their consumption and savings according to permanent income behavior. But it is important to remind ourselves of the reason why we are doing this. We are after a theory of business cycles, how people react as unforeseen events, be it pandemics, financial crisis, or others, hit the economy. As such, we first need to ask what does permanent income hypothesis have to say when households are hit by unforeseen shocks. Let's go back to our previous example, where there was an oscillating income and households would borrow and save to have stable consumption. What would happen if a one-time, temporary, extra 100 euro income increase would take place? Well, according to permanent income hypothesis, households' consumption responds to permanent income. This means that the 100 euros would be divided through the four periods, leading to a 25 euro per period increase in consumption. This means that out of the 100 euros, only 25 are going to be spent on consumption. We call this the marginal propensity to consume and is equal to the ratio of the change in consumption to the change in income and is, in this example, equal to 0.25. As a consequence, the marginal propensity to save is given by the ratio of the change in savings to the change in income and is equal to 0.75 in this case. The conclusion is that when faced with a one-time temporary shock to income, the marginal propensity to consume is small and to save is high. What if the one-time shock would be permanent? What if the 100 euro increase would take place not just in 2019, but for all the periods? What would permanent income behavior imply? Well, a permanent increase in income of 100 euros means that permanent income also increases by 100 euros in this simple example with a constant interest rate of zero. As a consequence, consumption will increase by the same amount, since consumption is equal to permanent income. Hence, the prediction of the permanent income hypothesis is that in response to permanent income shocks, the marginal propensity to consume is high and close to or equal to 1, and the marginal propensity to save is small and close or equal to 0. It is now time to summarize our main findings so far. According to the permanent income hypothesis, consumption equals permanent income. This is a long-run average of lifetime income. Consumption changes according to changes in permanent income. Temporary shocks to income translate to small changes in permanent income and tend to have little effect on consumption. Permanent shocks to income translate to large changes in permanent income and tend to have large effects on consumption. Asset markets are used to smooth transitory shocks into a smooth consumption profile. What about if we have changes to other elements in the environment, like interest rates? The interest rate is the relative price of consumption today versus tomorrow. By giving up C units of consumption today, we can consume 1 plus I times C units of consumption tomorrow. Hence, an increase in the interest rate will induce a decrease in consumption today and an increase in consumption tomorrow. We call this the intertemporal substitution effect between consumption today and consumption tomorrow of a given increase in the interest rate. However, an increase in the interest rate will also affect the return on asset holdings. If you have a positive net asset position, an increase in the interest rate results in a positive income effect since the return on your assets is now higher, inducing higher consumption in all periods. If you have a negative asset position, an increase in the interest rate results in a negative income effect due to the fact that now you have to pay higher interest on your debt, inducing lower consumption in all periods. So, what is the net effect? If substitution and income effects point in the same direction, the answer is clear. As an example, think when the interest rate goes up for someone with a lot of debt. The increase in the interest rate has a negative substitution effect on consumption today, leading you to reduce consumption. This increase will also lead to increases in interest due on existing debt, leading to a further decrease in consumption today.
So it is clear that consumption will drop. However, if the substitution and income effect work in opposite directions, you cannot really tell. Such is the case when the interest rate increases for an individual with a net positive asset position. The intertemporal substitution effect points towards a decrease in current consumption, whereas the positive income effect points to an increase in current consumption. All in all, a shock can be permanent or transitory and can have effects in the same period, intertemporal effect, and or in different periods, intertemporal effects. These can be income effects when they expand your intertemporal budget constraint and you can buy more of what makes you happy. In this case, consumption in period one, period two, and so forth. Or they can be substitution effects when they change the relative price of two goods that make you happy, inducing you to substitute between them, such as between consumption in period one and consumption in period two.